CGTN, China Global Television Network. With beautiful beaches, clear blue water, and unspoiled perfection, the Seychelles is one of the premier tourist destinations in the world. Now, in addition to its natural beauty, the country has also achieved a steady economic growth over the last few years. Well, at the country's helm is President Danny Faure. He has been president since 2016, and prior to that was the Minister of Finance and later the Vice President. He's also a global champion on the challenges of climate change. We sat down for a conversation with President Faure to talk about his passion for climate change, how he has spearheaded the country's economic growth, and what lies ahead for the seashells. I'm Beatrice Marshall from Mahe Island in the Seashells. Welcome to this special edition of Talk Africa. The Seashells is an archipelago of 115 islands, but has one of the smallest populations in Africa. Its steady economic growth and low population, however, has ensured that the Seashells has the highest per capita GDP in Africa. Before we sit down with President Faure, let's take a closer look at the islands of the Seashells. The Seashells archipelago lies in the Indian Ocean, northeast of the island of Madagascar. It boasts some of the most pristine beaches and oceans anywhere in the world, and its comfortably warm weather makes the Seychelles a year-round tourist destination. The Seychelles is a relatively young democracy, only gaining independence in 1976. But over the last 20 years, the country has maintained political stability and shown strong economic growth. This growth is largely due to the vibrant tourism sector, which contributes 25% of the GDP. Its second largest industry and biggest employer is the Indian Ocean tuna, which provides 13% of the GDP. The tuna canning company exports 98% of its product and has the number one selling brand in France. The capital of Victoria is a diverse and beautiful town with a mix of architecture and narrow streets which are largely filled with new, modern cars. It also holds the record for the smallest capital city in Africa. Victoria's proudest monument is the Lord Laws, an elegant replica of the clock first erected outside London's Victoria Station. It has remained virtually unchanged since 1903. The Seychelles is a true melting pot of cultures. The Seychellois, as its people are known, come from a unique background of African, Indian, Chinese, French, and British. It is also a very environmentally conscious country, which is reflected in the cleanliness and beauty of both its natural environments and towns. Your Excellency, thank you very much for giving us uh, this opportunity. Uh, to get started, though, I want to know a bit about yourself. Tell us a bit about yourself, your background, and why you got into leadership. You know, I've always been interested about uh, community uh, development. Uh, and from 1998, uh, then I became a Minister for Education. So I spent uh, almost eight years um, at, the, at the Ministry of Education. And from then on, I became the Minister for, for Finance. And I was uh, responsible uh, to lead uh, an economic team here, uh, whereby we had to relook at uh, the whole economy. Um, as you know, we had an economic crisis. So most of the economic reforms started under my watch in 2008, 2009. And uh, I was made, uh, I was appointed vice president on the 1st of July, 2010. And then I became, uh, I became the country's vice uh, president on the 16th of uh, October. What motivates me and uh, 
has always been uh, uh, what can I do to make a different difference in, in people's lives. So let's go back a little bit because you talk about the economic crisis of 2008 and, and, and the economic turnaround that Seashells um, has had. Talk to us about that economic turnaround because when you look back uh, all the way up to the 80s and what Seashells is today, it is quite uh, different. Talk to us about that uh, economic turnaround. So I think basically, you know, from, from the 80s, we, we were following uh, an economic uh, policy of uh, centralized economy and the belief was also to to have a lot of uh, what is called uh, expan expansionist uh, policy whereby the budget would uh, would run at a level of uh, deficit to cover for for programs that we that we did and it just caught up with us in 2008 where the the country's debt to GDP was over 170 percent and today as I speak today the country's debt to GDP stands at 55 percent. So what we've been able to do is to put in place a macroeconomic program whereby fiscal discipline, fiscal policy is there and there's a discipline and the country has been running uh, what is called primary surplus since 2009 up to today, the country year on year, we have been running a primary surplus. I want to get a feeling from you as to what it is that you think has made uh, the seashells what it is today. What is the seashells today? Apart from its beauty, both in terms of environment uh, and um, the caring nature of our, of our people, we have recognized that uh, the environment that has been given to us by our creator needs to be respected. And in terms of policy, we have done our best to ensure that in Seychelles, across our program, there is what is called sustainable um, development uh, policies in place. And as a country, we have invested in our people. So we have pursued a path whereby the people, they are at the center of development. And we, build that, and we believe that people, they need to live a life of dignity. So what is number one top priority in our program, what matters for us and the people? So Africa is a very young continent and 60% of Africa's population are now car currently characterized as the youth. In terms of the youth development and youth programs uh, in the seashells to cater for this burgeoning population, what do you have in place? I would say that we are one of the only countries uh, today in Africa uh, that we have a ministry that is in charge of policy development for the young people but we have a national youth council whereby, whereby all youth organizations, they are affiliated, they register, and they, they elect out of their members directors to sit on the board of the national youth council. And every year to the national budget, government, we allocate funds so that they can manage their programs. So they are, they are involved. So the young people in Seychelles are not marginalized. They are at the center of development. When the young people of Seychelles, they finish their post-secondary institutions, uh, and this is around, I would say, 18, 19 years old, we have what is called my first job. So the program of my first job allows a young person to be employed in the private sector, whereby part of the salary is covered by the organization and the other part is covered by the state. So there is no reason for a young to say that I finished my studies and I don't have a job because automatically you can go onto the, onto the program.
the environment uh, is quite a central theme uh, for you and you're very vocal about the, the challenges and the need to face those challenges brought about by climate change. Why are you so passionate about this? No, it's, it's our own survival. Uh, for many years, Seychelles has been uh, advocating. We, we see what's the problem, what's happening around us. And um, we, we have done our duty. We treat uh, climate change as a human rights. Uh, it's the right for, for our own survival. And um, apart from what Seychelles is, uh, the beauty of my people and, and the country, uh, the leadership role that we play today in the world in terms of climate change uh, is one whereby uh, we bring uh, to the forefront um, real issues, not only affecting Seychelles, but all uh, small island states, small island developing states uh, across the world and also our continent, because we, we, will, we will feel the effects of climate change. And this is why when I attended the United Nations uh, Climate uh, Action Summit, I was very, very happy that uh, almost all leaders from our continent, we presented concrete plans on what we are doing. So the continent, we are prepared to do what needs to be done. And uh, we await other countries to emulate and to, to follow. Do you feel that after you, uh, uh, the, the leaders of the small island developing states, after they have presented their proposals, that finally uh, they are receiving enough global attention? Because according to scientists, if sea water levels rise just three feet, the people of uh, the population of uh, seashells will have nowhere to go. Yeah, you see, basically, I think the time has come for them to, to listen. And uh, my take on that is uh, some of them have begun to, to listen. Uh, already they have set up what is called a special trust fund within the World Bank and uh, there is a tune of around 250 million uh, US dollars that has been put aside and this is to deal with the issues of plastic because plastic is also another of our problems um, affecting the oceans and I think it's important that we protect the oceans. And uh, I think uh, there's a, uh, there are issues of mitigation, adaptation, um, Seychelles, for example, we have a comprehensive plan on how to deal with coastal, our coastal areas. And for us to, to, to be in a position for us to um, mitigate uh, against uh, the problems of, uh, of, um, of climate change and others, it is important that we invest in these areas. And I think um, there is an appetite now for, for countries uh, to come forward and to, to finance these projects, but I think more needs to be done. In terms of more needing to be done and in terms of uh, uh, mitigation and adaptation, what would you like to see though in the future? What I want to see in the future is once, once a country presents its program and the program has had a, a we have had a, a costing to the program. Um, we just need to have uh, institutions in the world today that have this necessary mandate that they can act quick on that, you know? And it is, um, I think we need to treat it as we have, uh, we have, for example, if there's a war um, in other regions, and you see how the United Nations Security Con uh, Council reacts to the wars in, in other parts of the world. But I think it's this how you respond uh, to the problems that, uh, countries across the, the world, um, small states. And I think it's this, this is what we want. Um, and I know, for example, the, uh, the Green Fund, people have um, made a lot of um, pledge for them to, to put money there. But the process that it takes, the red tip that it takes for you eventually to get funding for your program, for your project, it takes a lot of time. So I think we just need also to relook at those uh, mechanisms and make it easier for countries to access funds so that we can implement the projects and programs on the ground. What are some of the projects though that uh, Seashells has put in place and that can be emulated by similar countries? You see, one of the first things that we, we did 
um, internationally uh, there is a, an agreement that uh, we need to have um, a protection of our oceans and, uh, and the percentage that has been agreed on is 30%. Um, we are one of the first countries on the continent and in the region as we speak now. We have already met the target of 26% uh, marine protected areas. And uh, by January, February next year, we will hit the target of 30%, meaning 10 years ahead of the 2030. And it just shows you the, um, the political will, okay? And uh, Seychelles today, we are leading the way. And I think it's, it's very important, it's important that we do that because this is in one of the ways we, we just need to show that we can do it. And of course, we've received the necessary support for our international partners, but I think there has to be a leadership. And I think we just need all of us to do what is necessary to meet the 2030 target. Excellency, thank you. We're going to take a short break now. When we return, we'll continue our conversation with President Danny Faure. Life moves pretty fast. Ideas move at the speed of sound. Technology moves at the speed of light. If you don't filter out the noise, you might miss the details. We pay attention to the details because they matter. Showing you a different perspective. See the difference. Welcome back to Talk Africa. We're still here at the State House in Victoria speaking with the Seychelles President, Danny Fare, Your Excellency. I want to come back to uh, the economy of Seychelles uh, for a bit, Your Excellency, if you let me, uh, because your growth rate today is at about 5.8%. It is gradually rising. According to the World Bank, Seychelles is the only African uh, country that has achieved a high income uh, economy. What is it that the Seychelles has done to achieve all this in what I would say a relatively short time? I, I think we've worked hard. Um, we've had the, we've had a, we had the vision for our country. We put in place the necessary strategy, strategies in place uh, to address uh, the fundamentals of our development. And um, today, as you say, we are uh, classified as a high uh, income country. In fact, it's the only high income country in, in Africa. It doesn't mean that we don't have uh, other problems. Uh, but I think what is important, it's important for us to, to look at your, the people, uh, the strengths, not the strengths that we have, for example, in Seychelles, uh, the environment. So basically we've made use, use of our environment the pristine environment that we have, and uh, we open our doors and we build it slowly, gradually. And today we have tourism, that is the number one pillar of the Seychelles economy, and its contribution to GDP is 25% contribution. And through this contribution, we are, we, are, we are able, through the national budget, to fund programs in education, in health, in housing, in social protection. So you, you, we continue to invest in human capital by using uh, receipts that we get through tourism. So I think it's, it's, it's important that uh, from a leadership perspective, whatever you earn needs to go back into development, into infrastructure. And I think this is, a, this is the type of, uh, of uh, of leadership that is, that is needed uh, for, for countries to, to prosper. So there are two elements you have mentioned here. You've mentioned tourism as the mainstay of your economy. And you've also mentioned the idea that uh, the seashells is 
opening up, opening its door to, to more trade. Two issues coming up here, though, because tourism being your mainstay, though, it, it, are there plans to diversify your economy? Because um, tourism in Africa is now projected to reach over 261 uh, billion by 2050. Are there ways that you're considering diversifying your economy from tourism, or is tourism going to remain your mainstay? Uh, we will continue to to rely heavily on tourism so as to to consolidate what we have achieved uh, but it has taken us two years and we've done a lot of consultations within uh, within Seychelles and today I am happy that we have a national uh, strategic plan for our country and uh, we are looking at uh, other areas uh, for us to diversify the Seychelles economy. We want also to increase the GDP uh, that uh, presently we, we have as a result of our own development in, in fisheries. Uh, as you know, we also have a, a very important can uh, tuna uh, factory in, in our country. So we are looking at um, doing more in terms of small businesses. We want to consolidate our financial services. Um, we, are, we want also to, to do more in terms of the, of the IT. We are now looking at uh, what, what is called the new frontier for Seychelles development, and that is the blue economy. So I think uh, here we have prospects, and, uh, and I think this is an area for, um, for investments to come here, build partnership with our locals, and I think we are, we are conscious that uh, we need also to diversify. But as we build the human resources and consolidate what we have in place. Seychelles is a small population. And you talked about uh, Seychelles opening up now for more trade. The continental free trade area that uh, came into place last year, how does the Seychelles hope to uh, position itself to take advantage of the trade that could be offered by the opening up of a 1.2 billion market on the continent. We are ready for that. And I think it's important uh, where, where trade, uh, intra-trade is concerned. So I have taken my uh, time over the last two years to build a relationship with all the leaders uh, within, uh, within Eastern Africa and Southern Africa. Um, there is air connectivity, um, Ethiopia, Seychelles, K Kenya, Seychelles, South Africa, Seychelles. So I think this is very, very important. And um, we also need to look at um, the cargo shipping lines within, within the continent and within our own uh, Indian Ocean. But I think, yes, I would say that this is a golden opportunity for, for countries in Africa to look at the existing barriers for trade and, uh, and see the, uh, the potential uh, of this important agreement that we have our leaders on the continent we have signed. And I think this is very important for the, for the young generation uh, coming up and it's, it is their future. Right, Excellency, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, your visit to uh, China in 2018 because you met uh, President Xi Jinping and uh, you talked specifically about opening trade and continuing relations between the Seychelles and China. Tell us a bit about the two MOUs that your country signed um, with China, particularly on uh, you know, the marine cooperation towards the Blue Partnership and also your, uh, your partnership in regards to the BRI, the Belt and Road Initiative. Now we see the Belt and Road Initiative as a, a very ambitious program. And in its implementation, we will see um, um, prosperity within the region. There will be economic development, there will be trade. And I think um, Seychelles stands to, to benefit from, uh, from what would happen uh, with this development. So it, that was the main reason why um, I agreed that we need to, to sign this MOU. One of the uh, MOUs that uh, we signed with uh, our Chinese uh, counterpart was one on, uh, on in the area of environment. And basically here we're looking at um, 
uh, marine protection, uh, marine technology. Um, and uh, already we have received um, a team from, from China that has uh, come to Seychelles. And I'm happy to say that um, we are implementing uh, the MOU that we signed. And I think this is, this is the type of um, partnership that we welcome. All right. Uh, th this year as well, China is celebrating its uh, 70th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. I want to get a goodwill message from you to the Chinese people. As they celebrate their 70th uh, anniversary, uh, on behalf of uh, government and the people of Seychelles, uh, we stand in solidarity with them. We, we convey our warm message of uh, fraternity. We wish the government and people of the Republic of China all the very best. Uh, they have shown that uh, when they work together, when they adopt um, a vision which is very clear and they have plans and they've put their people at the center of development, they have brought shared prosperity to their people. And shared prosperity to the Chinese people goes beyond the, border, the borders of China. It has also come to our own continent that we can also take pride in what China is doing. And also we thank um, the Chinese people and the Chinese government for all their contribution in the development of Africa as our continent. Right, Excellency, a final comment from you though, because uh, you have been, I go back to my earlier statement, you've been in public service since 1985. What would you like to leave as your legacy and what are your future hopes for the seashells? I want to build strong institutions. Uh, when I came president, I told them it was not necessary for you to have a strong man at State House. What you want, you need to have a leader that has integrity, that has values, a very clear vision, and a heart for the people. And in my three years in office, I have demonstrated that my heart is with the people of Seychelles. And we have a vision. And today what I am do doing, I'm building strong institutions. Because the strong institutions will protect whatever our people has gained over time. And uh, when you talk about accountability of our citizens, it's accountability to what they do and the checks and balances are done by, uh, by, by the three branches of state that we have, and also the institutions are there. So I want to continue to build on building the strong, vibrant democracy, whereby um, a child who is born in my country, is born in a country that is safe, that has peace, stable, and knows that he or she can grow up to live a life of full dignity. As long as we live here on the earth, we can live a life of full dignity. Excellency, thank you very much. Thank you. And that's all we have time for this week on Talk Africa. But a big thank you to my guest, His Excellency Danny Faure, President of the Seashells. Remember, we'd love to hear your feedback through our social media handles on Facebook and on Twitter. And you can also catch the show on our YouTube playlist. Do keep the conversation going and tune in again next week for more Talk Africa. For me, Beatrice Marshall from Mahe Island in the Seashells, it's goodbye.